I want to talk to you this morning about your motives. Why do you do what you do? What's your motives? Because if you look throughout your life, throughout life experiences, throughout culture, throughout the scripture, we can actually find circumstances where you might have two people doing the exact same thing. But the reason that one is right and one is wrong is ultimately the reason for which they do it. You can have two people kill someone, one in premeditated murder and one in self-defense, and one we lock up for their entire lives, and one we don't. Is that fascinating to anyone else? Like, that's just kind of mind-blowing to me that, like, I think God is less concerned with your actions and more concerned with the motives of your heart. Now, there's a really quick way to abuse this and stretch it to a point where, all right, well, I can do whatever I want. You have just revealed the motive of your heart. Because if, if your ultimate goal is to do whatever you want, then your actions are going to show it. I think God wants to set some people free this morning um, in several different ways, in several different ways. But I really want to examine together this idea of motive. Why do you do what you do? There's this, uh, there's this really awesome TED Talk. This guy's name is Simon Sinek. He's a, he's a motivational speaker. Motivational speaker. And he does this talk, and he wrote a book called Start With Why. Now, I haven't read the book. I know nothing about it. But the TED Talk is fantastic. And he, he draws these. I'll do it for you. He draws these three concentric circles. And he discusses why great leaders and great businesses are great when there are other people doing the exact same things that they're doing, but because they're doing it for different reasons or projecting different motives, it doesn't work in the same way. So he draws these three concentric circles, and, it, and the, the circles go why in the middle, how next, what on the outside. And he begins to sort of break it down. He says if you take the average he, he uses Apple because um, he's an instrument of the Lord. And uh, Androids, raise your hand. Why? You need to examine your motives. Some things in life are worth getting valuable. Get in the closet. I'm not going to go there. So for all intents and purposes, this, I, I will say, this TED Talk is from like 2009, okay? 2009, Apple was the only legit uh, smartphone on the market, really. And so he begins talking about how what most computer companies do is they go on the outside and work their way in. They say, this is what we do. We make great computers. This is how we do it. Well, they're beautifully designed. They're simple to use. They have a great user experience. Want to buy one? And he makes this point of how when we start with our what, it is so much more difficult to get people interested in what you're doing. And his point, and I think the point that the Lord is, was really putting in my heart, stewing on this for the last few weeks, is that when we start with why, the what flows naturally. But when we start with what, there's any number of ways and any number of skewed directions that we might end up at when we get to why. He says, if you notice Apple computers, the way they do it is they, they start with their why. They go, everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. How do we do this? Our computers are beautifully designed, simple to use, and easy to operate. Would you like to buy one? Ooh, you got goosebumps, didn't you? It's also, I brought my voice down into that sexy octave. We're going to talk about lust in the breakout sessions tomorrow. Do you notice the difference in the, in the projection where I'm aiming versus going one direction or the other? It's the reason... Think of it this way. 
another, another great illustration. You guys know what a TiVo is? Does anyone own a TiVo? A TiVo is this contraption that allowed you to pause, play, rewind, and if you've paused, fast forward live television. Do any of your homes have TiVos? Do any of your homes have a DVR that does the exact same thing, but it's not TiVo brand? Yeah, a lot of you do. You know what's fascinating about that? Literally, TiVo became the verb. Well, we're, I'm TiVoing something. And yet, no one actually bought TiVos. Because they started with this place of, well, this is what we do. You can pause, play, rewind, live television. And then they moved on to, this is how we do it. You have the box. Would you like to buy it? Where someone else came along and they went, do you want to have ultimate control over your TV watching experience? You can stop, play, pause, and rewind live television. Be in control with our DVR. You, you understand the difference? Like psychologically, it has a huge effect on us. And I think the way we approach the Lord and relationships amongst one another, especially. I think that's really what I feel the Lord speaking to today. Relationships amidst us. Fellow brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that God has placed you in. Motives are ultimately the thing that God is most obsessed with. I like to use that word. That He is most concerned with. What He cares most about is why you do what you do. Have you ever asked yourself that question? Have, has anyone ever asked you that question? Because I, I am a... So I feel like I got that question asked to me a lot growing up. Like, Stephen, why'd you do that? And to be perfectly honest, as a middle child, I typically had really good motives. I just always did the wrong thing. You see, there's four types of people. There's those who do the right thing for the right reasons. That's how I feel about those people sometimes. There's those who do the wrong things often for the right reasons. And then there's those who do the right things for the wrong reasons. And there's those who do the wrong things for the wrong reasons. Now, people who do the wrong things for the wrong reasons, um, it's usually pretty clear where they stand. Obviously, God isn't typically happy with those people, but it's very clear. Where it often gets really muddy, especially with us, in the church, is there's a lot of people who do the right things for the wrong reasons. And those are maybe his least favorite people of all. Man, have I been there. It's part of what the Lord has done in me and just breaking me down over the last several years, it feels like, is breaking me of this idea of doing the right thing because I know other people are watching me. Now, it's valid and it's noble. I'm a leader. I have people watching my life constantly. Part of what I have to constantly think through in everything I do is, how is this going to be perceived by other people? But what that can quickly become is now I'm living for you and not for God. And there's a phrase from Scripture that we love in this group, is if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So if I live, I am to live for the Lord. Some of you, that's the decision you need to make this weekend. Some of you, that's the string the Lord's pulling on. Some of you, when you start wrapping that yarn from earth to heaven, you start dealing, letting the Lord deal with your heart. Ultimately, what he's trying to deal with is that you have, you're doing the wrong things for the wrong reasons, or you're doing the right things for the wrong reasons, but ultimately you haven't given full control of the motives of your heart to God. 
Some of you just need to come to him and release that into him this weekend, and that's what he wants to do in you. Some of you, he wants to deal with ultimately the hypocrisy in your heart. And I say that having been there and having to constantly deal with that looking in the mirror. This last week, um, where's Aaron McIntosh at? Love you, bro. Just want you to know that. That was the whole point. Okay, let's keep, no, I'm just kidding. So this last week, Janelle and I hacked down some of these giant bushes that covered our whole house cut them down and I couldn't get the stump out. It was literally like four wheel driving my truck and it didn't do anything. So I was like, Aaron, can you help me out? And he's got the stump grinder, you know, with his dad's business. And so he came over to help us, but we weren't there. We went to go visit a, a couple that just had a baby in the church. So we were going to visit the baby. And when we got back, Aaron had already done it for us, but Aaron had also cut down a whole other bush tree that we didn't intend for him to cut down. <laughs> Love you, bro. <laughs> now, I'm not going to be mad at Aaron. It bothered, the, the bush bothered me in the first place, okay? But it hit me like, the dude's motives were, like, he's out there sweating at my house for free. Like, he's coming to serve me. And yet, he did it wrong. So did I get out of the truck and be like, Aaron, oh, how many times? What is, no, I, got, I knew that Aaron's motives were right. And you need to recognize, some of you need to receive that, that that is the way your father looks at you. Because some of you just bear the weight of poor decisions. And they were, they were wrong. You were stupid. It's okay. Let's get past it together. Okay? Life sucks. Get a helmet. Any Boy Meets World fans? Okay. Sometimes you need to release the pressure that you live under because God's not getting out of the truck going, Ugh. He's going, okay, not what I planned, but I can plant another one. And this time when we plant it, we'll plant what we want together, because Janelle and I inherited that tree when we bought the house, and now we can put what we want there. And you'll recognize if you're willing to completely surrender the motives of your heart, completely surrender why you do certain things. He is so excellent. Like, obviously, doing the right thing for the right reasons, always the best play. Always. I don't want to underplay that. Do that. Do that thing. That's the good thing. But sometimes we miss the value of doing the wrong thing for the right reason. Sometimes we miss that he's so good at what he does <laughs> that one of his favorite things is actually taking the wrong thing you did with right motives and tweaking it so that it actually can plant something brand new and reveal something to the world that wasn't there before. But when we crush ourselves under that weight, we rob him of the opportunity to actually work in us. There's a story in Matthew 15 where Jesus is talking to some Pharisees. And the Pharisees were not his favorite group of people. They tended to be slightly frustrating to him. It says in verse 1, Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Okay. Some of you, y'all nasty. Raise your hand if you do not typically wash your hands before you eat. No shame here. I'm nasty. I don't, I don't typically wash my hands after I go to the bathroom. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to admit that. Severin's with me. What he's talking about here is not that they don't wash their hands and they're dirty. We don't want to have to shake their hands because their hands are nasty. That's not, they're not saying, oh, Jesus, their hands are yuck. What they're frustrated by is they're saying, we have a tradition. There's a way we do things. 
there is a right and a wrong here. And when they're walking around, specifically they would go into the marketplace and they were hanging with other gent, you know, with Gentiles, people that weren't Jews, and they didn't like the Gentiles. So when they come back, they're unclean. They need to wash their hands before they eat. So it was a matter of tradition, not hygiene. And Jesus scolds them. He gets frustrated. He speaks to something else, and then he comes to this in verse 10. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, their mouth, that is what defiles them. Jesus is speaking to this idea that ultimately the defilement of your life is the overflow of the motives of your heart. He wants to work in the things you do. He will. But he is so much more concerned with why you do it. Because if he can fix why you do certain things, the actions that flow from the why will naturally follow. And some of you are, you are wasting so much time trying to fix the what. And you have never stopped sat with him, sought the word, and sought wise counsel as to why you keep doing this thing in the first place. Some of you have had addictions for years, and you keep trying to break the addiction rather than figuring out why you're addicted to it in the first place. What is the trigger that brought to you it the first time, and what is the thing that triggers it every single time it happens? Because I promise if you break that cycle, the what goes away very quickly and very easily. But when you focus on the what, you will bang your head against the wall forever trying to figure out how to fix it, and you can't. It ultimately gets fixed when you submit the motives, the intentions of your heart to the Lord. Can I, uh, can I get two volunteers? Chloe, Frankie, we'll go young and old. I like it. Shmanel, would you like to help me with something? Give it up for these two and my beautiful, big, fat, pregnant wife. All right. Guys, she's fat. It's okay. This is a good thing. We asked the Lord for this for a really long time. You don't need to say, oh, and you say, aww. Aww. We said one of the names that I'm not going to tell you the names, but we said one of the names that we were thinking for the baby the other day, and I had my hand on on the belly, and when I said the name, the baby kicked super hard, and it freaked me out. We started laughing so hard, so then I did it again. I went through the whole list, said all the names, and when I got to that name again, the baby kicked again. It was the coolest thing ever, and you guys are not that impressed. All right, can I get you up here, babe? Okay, you can just, you can take a seat right here, beautiful. Okay, so you can zoom in on her. I'll get this out of the way. Get nice and tight. So you two can come over here. You can stand next to that light. So I want to teach you guys something that you may not know from, from filmmaking, from, from cinema, from the cinema, the cinematography. There's the thing in, in cinematography, which is the lighting and the shooting of films, called motivated lighting, okay? So what you'll notice right now is that my beautiful wife is, let's zoom in on her, let's take this out. She's somewhat lit, but how does, how does the shot look? Critique it for me. It's bad, it's bad. Why is it bad? You can't see, okay. See, what typically happens with people who don't like study film is you know when something's off. You know you don't like it, but you don't always know exactly what to do with it. That's the point of studying it and giving your life to it, right? So you'll watch something and be like, oh, that movie sucked. Why? Most of you are not sitting there going, oh, wow, they did not pull off that climax and denouement, right? And they had so much unmotivated lighting, I was losing my mind. You just go, ah, I don't know, it just sucked. They didn't like it. So this is a, a, a specific, you look so beautiful, even in the dark lighting. This is an, an example of what we call unmotivated lighting. Okay, so what cinematographers often do, directors of photography do, is they'll pull in what they call practical lights. This is a light that is part of the scene, okay? It's practical, it's in the scene. 
But what's the problem? She's still dark, right? Something happens in your brain when you're watching this. You go, okay, there's light in the scene. There's a light literally right next to her. Why is she not lit? And again, you're not sitting there going, oh, this lighting's unmotivated. You're just going, I, this scene just feels weird. It feels really awkward. Okay, so here's my helpers. So, Chloe, you want to come over here? You're going to hold that up for me. Put it down for a sec. Frank, you're going you're gonna to control this, this boy for me. All right, so you can put that down. Let's let it hit her, hit her face. It, a little much, a little harsh, yeah? Okay, so Chloe, pull that in front of the light. So now, you see what we're dealing with now? Frank, turn that off, hit that top button. Weird, right? Turn it back on. Doesn't that look beautiful? She just got so much more beautiful, right? <laughs> Guys, if you do what Pastor Dave was talking about last night and you focus on the motives and the intentions of your heart and you pursue a woman's heart, That's what you get. So Matt, work on it, bro. <laughs> this is what's referred to as motivated lighting. See, what happens is, turn it off. If I see that, or if I see this, I instinctively just don't like it. I may not know what to do with it, but it doesn't feel right. Give me the light. And when I see this, You'll, you'll actually realize that your brain is doing ultimately the same thing. You see the difference? Let's just watch the difference between, just look forward. You see this versus this? This? She's lit the same. It, it actually looks really good. But it looks better for some reason right now. You notice that? Because something is happening in your brain when you can actually see the source when you can actually see where the light's coming from, it makes so much more sense to you, and it's so much more enjoyable to you. All right, you can give them a hand. You can give them a hand. You can turn it off. Thank you. See, ultimately, I think what God wants to do in us is he wants to deal with your source. He wants to deal with where the light, the actions, are coming from. And I think there's a lot to be said if we were just so much more honest with one another about the motives of our heart. I think there's a lot to be said that if we spent more time being real, why'd you do that? And instead of immediately getting defensive and thinking of an excuse and a reason that you feel like they would accept, me and Pastor Dave just got into this this week, actually. He, he essentially asked me to do something, and I said, well, I can't do it because of this. And instead of being completely honest about why, I picked the thing that I felt he would align most closely with rather than being completely open to the motives of my heart. If I can just bear my soul. And we so often do that. We cover up what's really going on in us because we're afraid if people really understood the depths to which we sought people's attention, they would not want to be around us. If people really understood the degree to which we do things and post it on Facebook hoping that our pastors or leaders would see it, when that's really not the desire motive of our heart off camera, if we were really brutally on, like I, I personally like love this. It's one of my favorite things to do when somebody asks me a question and they like there's the, the pre-tailored response. There's the thing that you're kind of supposed to say. And then I'm brutally honest with actually how I feel. And they're kind of just like, oh, uh, I don't know what to do with, with this right now. It throws people off and I just think it's hilarious because I'm a, uh, I don't know why that's in us, but we think it's so funny to make people uncomfortable. I don't know why, but I've loved it my whole life. Thanks, Jake. 
Uh, we were playing Capture the Flag last night, or Capture the Leader, I should say. We're playing Capture, you guys were all playing Capture the Pastor, is what you were playing. You were immediately, you were just going for us. So I went to go find a hiding spot, and I actually went and hid when you guys were like still getting ready. Like, I hid by the, the building by the water where like there was like progression guys in there, like finishing, like they were like leaving while I was getting into my hiding spot. And so here was my mental process. I was like, okay, I have to preach in the morning, it's late. It's like bedtime right now, and I want to make sure that I can go study my notes, make sure I feel confident for the morning. It's like, I should just go somewhere really easy to find so that I can get out quickly and go work on my message. That was my initial thought. But then I saw Kev Spearing going hard. He comes out in like his camis and the face makeup, and I was like, okay, okay, let's do it. So then my thought was, I'm going to hide with Kev because he's a Marine. So he'll probably pick a good hiding spot. And then I was like, Kev, where are you hiding? He's like, you see those big pine trees over there at the top? And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Anything slightly more terrestrial that we can think of? I'm mildly afraid of heights. And by mildly, I mean extremely. <clears throat> so my thought was, okay, I initially honestly wanted to go hide with Kevin because I thought he'd be really good at it and I thought it would be fun. And then I was like, no, I want to beat the Marine. I want to go hide somewhere and I want to get found after he does. So I went, it was, I think, was it me, Matt, and who was with us, Pastor Tyler? And so we went down by the water and they like looked around, they couldn't find anything, so they kind of, bailed, and I was like, guys, I'm going to hide in that trash can. It'll be perfect. So then they left, but I didn't. I got in that trash can, and it was a new bag. It was not a new can. You can still, like, if you look at my hat, it's still covered with schmutz from the trash can. Because I climbed in with my hat on, because I was like, well, I can't leave an Island Images hat next to the trash can. I think it would be pretty obvious who's in the trash can. <laughs> so I get in, and I am not a flexible person, like, at all. I get in this trash can, you know, and I first get, you know, I'm like in the fetal position, and then that wasn't working, so I, you know, in the trash can, switch into one of these, <laughs> and then I switch to one of these and I was Tebowing for a while and I just could not like if you can imagine there's not a whole lot of comfortable spots in a trash can but I was determined I was like I'm going to give my best that was honestly like <laughs> if there's something that the Lord has really taught me in the last five years I'd say is to examine my actions before I do them and ask myself the question, why are you doing this? If you're, an adult, you have heard, if you're a young adult, you have heard me say this. Well, I think I'm going to do this. And what do I say? Why? Every time. I don't ultimately care what you're going to do. I really don't. Because I've, I've come to an understanding that most actions are good or bad based on the motives behind them, not the action themselves. And so I really try hard to ask myself these questions. And it was, okay, I'm going to go get out so I can go work on my message. And I was like, why are you, is that the right motive? Are you being a team player? Are you, are you participating in what God's doing in collision right now? Because part of it is the fun and the pleasure and the enjoyment of being with each other. It's not just these moments. And I was like, no, I don't have good motives. Okay, I am going to go pick the best spot on planet Earth. And our second best option was we were going to go in the water with straws and just breathe through a straw. But we couldn't find straws. <clears throat> but here's how it often works. If you'll just be willing to have the right motives, God will typically work out what is necessary for you as long as you're willing to do things for the right reasons. <clears throat> So Cole and Sierra's team, what team is that? Progression three? <laughs> Are you guys in first right now? I wonder why. You guys got like nine pastors. 
all of a sudden, I'm in there, and I just hear, I like, I like record a little video to Janelle and the baby. I was like, guys, they may find me in here next year, because I'm not coming out until I am found. And this is the best place on planet Earth. So just give my love to the bean, because you may never see me again. And all of a sudden, I hear these scattering voices and these people moving around like banshees. They were so loud, like it was obnoxious. <clears throat> And all of a sudden, they're like, okay, let's get out of here, right? You're like going to leave. Like, they're like, all right, let's get out of here. And then as they're leaving, Cole goes, I bet there's somebody in that trash can. I can feel it. <laughs> like, joking, right? Like, he was totally joking. And Sierra, joking, goes over, yeah, let's push it over. <laughs> so they come up to the trash can and start, like, she starts messing with it, at which point I... Guys, I had been in there the better part of like 20, 25 minutes at this point. There's no air in a trash can. Like it was recycled. I farted at least twice. And literally there was this one little strip of open. And I'm like, <sighs> I was dying. It was awful. I didn't even eat pizza. If I had eaten pizza, you'd find me dead in a trash can this morning from methane inhalation. No question in my mind. So Cole's like, I bet somebody's in that trash can. Let's go check it out. I can feel it. And Sierra's like, yeah, let's go push it over. So she comes over to it. She gets over to the trash can, and she goes to, like, grab the lid and just, like, messing with it, at which point she lifted it up, and I'm, like, trying to get my phone because I was going to video their uh, reactions to it. So, like, right when she lifts it, the, the phone light goes on, but it didn't record for some reason. I have no idea why. And this is what hit me afterwards. I tried so hard. My motives were pure. And ultimately, I completely failed. <laughs> I was found pretty quickly. For all intents and purposes, I was found really quickly. Kev was found way after me. I totally lost. But I got to get to go work on my message. And I think oftentimes if you will just submit your motives to the Lord, he will make sure that you get what you need. Janelle and I, on Wednesday, I, my tabs on my truck are two months expired. That's a pretty big fine if you get pulled over with expired tabs. So I was like, snap, I'm going to go pay for my tabs. And when I made the account online to go pay for my tabs, it, re it shows you all the vehicles registered to your name, which is mine and hers. So then I see Janelle's tabs are expired too. I'm like, what the heck? expires on your birthday. Your birthday's in September. Mine's tied to my dad's because the license was transferred. And so I click hers. Her tabs have been expired since last September. She's been pulled over in the last like few months. He didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. So then it came to this point of, okay, well, your tabs are going to be set to renew next month. Maybe if we wait till next month, we won't have to pay for 2018 and 2019. Because that was going to be like 600 bucks. Like, it was expensive to do three. I was like, let's just wait till next month. Then we can just renew it for this next year and not pay this last year. And we'll get out of paying the last year. And then it was like, why? I was like, oh, Lord, that's the wrong motives. That's actually me trying to steal from the state of Michigan. Dang it. So I was like, babe, we're about to pay $600 on license tabs at once. We're going to Italy next week, and the Lord blessed us with, like, the cheapest tickets humanly possible. But I was like, we're going to be eating ramen the entire time we're in Italy. So I go to pay for it. And I paid, I, went, I bought hers. I went and checked out and bought hers. And at the end of it, it said, thank you. Your tabs expire, her birthday, September 11th, 2020. And I was like, Janelle, we scammed the system. We didn't pay for tabs last year. Didn't realize it. So we actually saved $200. I'm not saying the Lord's into cheating the system. But I'm kind of saying the Lord's into cheating the system. Okay? Here's my point. 
if you are just willing to submit, to ask yourself that question, why am I doing this? And if you recognize in yourself that the reason you're doing it for is not pure, if you are willing to submit that to him, if you are willing to align your heart with pure motives, to align your heart and stop trying to just figure out what the right thing to do is, but I'm going to bring the source into the shop. I'm going to make sure that when people see me, they're not just seeing my actions. They're seeing what motivates me. They're seeing the motives behind what I do. I'm going to make sure that when people see me, they don't just see what I'm doing. I want, to, I want them to see the lamp too. Because if there's just light on my face and I'm just trying to do the best things I know how and I'm just trying to do it right, some of you need to be set free from trying to get it right. I want people more than anything, I want them to see the lamp. I want them to see the source even more than what I'm doing. I want us to really spend some time this weekend. I'm going to pray in just a second, but I really want you to spend some time this weekend examining your heart, asking the Lord to reveal to you the hidden motives and intentions of your heart. David says in Psalm 19, verse 12, You got that on the screen? Psalm 19, verse 12, it says, But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. He says, who can discern? Basically, I don't know me all that well. I need you to reveal to me the hidden intentions of my heart. He says later in Psalm 139, he says, Search me, O God, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. He says, but who can discern their own errors? Please, Lord. Forgive me my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. He's saying, keep me from doing the wrong things for the wrong reasons. I don't want to do things badly, intentionally. And this is the goal. And then I'm going to be blameless. Then I'm going to be innocent of great transgression. And here's the part that always sticks with me. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth, see Jesus, when he spoke to the Pharisees, he says, he says, the things that go in you, they don't, they don't defile you. What defiles you is what comes out of you. Because what comes out of you, he says later, he says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what we often do is we judge others by their actions and we judge ourselves by our motives. How many times have you had this conversation? The person says, but that's not what I meant. You said, but that's what you said. Have you ever noticed that? We look at other people and we say, I don't care what your motive was, this is what you did. But we look in a mirror and we go, I don't care what you did, I care what your motive was. It's okay, we, and we justify ourselves by our motives. Here's what I'm going to ask. Lay it all bare. Lay it all out. Let's be willing to be extremely honest, open, vulnerable with one another. To be willing to have a conversation where straight up someone says to you, why'd you do that? And your response is, because I wanted your approval and I wanted to look cool in front of you. You know how humbling that is? Do you have any idea how humbling, like how binding that is to two people? Because what happens is actions and a focus on actions breeds contention and animosity. It makes us angry. Well, but you did this, but you do this, but you do this. And then the minute someone goes, but I did it because, all of a sudden there's a release and there's a peace that comes over the situation. If you will be willing to be honest with God and with others about why you do what you do, if you will be willing to allow your motives the source to be the thing that drives the light, the actions in your life. Then God will do things in you this weekend. Mend relationships, mend pieces of your heart, break addictions, things that you honestly didn't walk in thinking possible. We pray with me. I just want to pray over you guys. Lord, as we spend this weekend 
putting yarn around these nails and signifying and opening up to ourselves, to others, to you, what we're struggling with, what we're dealing with, what we want to see heaven invade in our earthly situations. Lord, let us take a minute, whether we've done it already or we're about to do it. Lord, let us take a minute when we do that to examine why we do certain things. Why am I depressed? Why am I angry? Why am I so full of lust? Why am I so frustrated all the time? Why am I so mean or sad? Whatever. Why? Let's start with why. Lord, I just pray blessing over this group. I pray a release from the burden of a fear of man, the burden that feels like we have to measure up and be perfect in front of other people. Lord, I pray a release that the Father's heart would be understood in this group, that they would deeply understand that you see the hidden motives of our hearts. And that is what we want to bring into the light. Lord, when we do that, everything else comes into alignment. When we seek the kingdom first and your righteousness, your motives, then all these things will be given to us. We're so thankful for what you're doing this week. We're so thankful for what you have planned for today and tomorrow, Sunday. We're so thankful for all the fun. But Lord, we want to stop and examine our hearts and ask why. Because you take so much pleasure in that. Bless this group. Let them know your love in a new way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for checking us out. You can see any latest sermons here, or you can go to weareoneyouth.com, scroll to the very bottom, and there's a connect bar. And on that connect bar, I want you to just let us know how this sermon has impacted you. If you've made a personal decision for Jesus Christ, we want to know about it. We'd love to know your testimony. We'd love to know who you are and to really connect and be a part of the family with you. So if you can do that, we would love for that to happen. Or if you have any questions about upcoming events or more about who we are, browse our website. You can check that out there as well. If you liked what you heard today and you'd like to come on out as a part of our gathering on Wednesday nights, we encourage you to do that. We'd love to shake your hand. We'd love to hug you and welcome you to the family. Or you can check us out on social media and be a part of what's going on every day here at We Are One. God bless.